Hey everybody, welcome back to Two Comic Book Dudes. <laughs> uh, Justin over there flailing madly. Uh, this week is, uh, well, it's actually Monday, so it's just another Xenoscope Monday, and we are going to be covering a couple great books this week. Uh, my name's Aaron Clutter, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Comic Booked, and with me as always... Hey everybody, I'm Justin Padgett, I'm the Managing Editor over at Comic Booked. Yes, this, so this is round eight of... Uh, just another <laughs> <Zinescope> Monday. <laughs> Round eight. <laughs> Sounds like a battle. It is. Um, sometimes it's sometimes it is a battle. It's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to carve out the time and be able to do these shows, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, and then fighting with lighting and everything. I don't know. I still don't like the lighting on my side, but nothing I could do about that. Everything's a work in progress. <sighs> Yeah, you know, at least we have sound and video, which is uh, two Very things important. that we were really worried about. So, bad um, issues with those in the past. That's right. <laughs> so this week we'll give you some uh, some treats here as we enter into another uh, just another Xenoscope Monday. Um, this week we have two books to review: Oz, Reign of the Witch Queen, which uh, number three, which is the uh, third volume in the Oz trilogy so far, and. Uh, this is the third volume of the third volume. So, so. Oh, and you were saying nice. that they do everything in threes, or it seems. Yeah, like everything. That's that's what I've noticed. Three series kind of thing. Yep. Yep. So unless you know you got the ongoing, so like Wonderland is an ongoing, right? Um, but the mini, the Fall of the Wild, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, Jungle Book, Fall of the Wild was the last, like the third volume in that series. I think Neverland had three. Um, there were three um, Robin, Robin Hoods. Hood. Yeah. originally and then there's an ongoing now um yeah there's been a bunch of different ones now, i don't know like this week i went to uh, my local comic shop and they had a big sidewalk sale which was kind of mm-hmm. cool and i got a ton of books so as i'm going through and, and i got a ton of xenoscope which was really cool um but i picked up like the hunters um or hunters shadowlands uh number numbers one through five so that was actually the whole series but it was oh, wow. volume two so there's a volume one there somewhere. I'll just have to find it. Um, but I picked up some other weird stuff like No Tomorrow. I had never heard of that one. But just some uh, like one shots and stuff from them. This well, actually, this was number three and number four of the series. Okay. And yeah, it has um, it, it has uh, Karis in it uh, from the um, the um, Grim Tales of Terror, the the Goddess of Death. Mm-hmm. So it's some series about her. So I thought, well, I'll find out a couple, little bit more about her anyway. Uh, but I, I did pick up a couple books from Warlord of Oz series, which was the second volume in this storyline, and some nice. of the cool covers of Dorothy. Um, this was one of the other ones that I got. Pretty neat. So, you know, a, a lot of the covers I really like. Um, I picked up this was a one shot for Realm Knights for the Age of Darkness. Oh wow. So that was a pretty neat one. I haven't read that one yet. I think I need um, to go just, back. I need to finish out Neverland. Oh yeah. I think I don't think I got. I don't think I was able to pick up number four, so I need to find it. I don't. I don't think I ever read that one. So I think mm-hmm. when I came in, when I started reading, that was like the last one. Uh, Neverland, like number five or something, was it was it finished up that series? Well, so I read I, like yeah. the last book. I'm just talking about the Neverland that was part of Age of Darkness. So it was a four parter. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. When I when I came in to start doing my reviews, which mm-hmm. has been over a year ago, so April of last right. year, um, Age of Darkness was already underway. Gotcha. And I think I got the last one or two issues, maybe of that. I don't know. I'd have to go back and read my own articles <laughs> <laughs> and see see what I've done. So, just for everybody listening out there or watching or whatever, you know, if you want to catch up on Xenoscope, um, you go go out to countcomicbook.com. That's our website. And just go up to the little search box in the corner and type in just another Xenoscope Monday, and you'll be able to find all of uh, my reviews back to uh, April of 2014. And that will really pretty much review every single book all the way from there till now, um, and you'll catch up on our videos as well. Or you can just go to our YouTube channel. Um, you know, you can uh, go to youtube.com and then look up Comic Booked. And you'll find our channel, and on there, there's a whole bunch of videos, um, not just ones that we've done, although we've done, I think, 28 or 29 now, so there are quite a few wow. of ours. Wow. Uh, yeah, I know. it's hard to believe. That's um, 
Yep. But then there's also ones that the comic book studios guys did. Uh, and those are really great. So you want to take a look at those. Um, but you know, please subscribe, like share, do all that good stuff for the, the channel. We're trying to build up viewers. Um, if some of these other people can get thousands and thousands of views, we could at least get, you know, a hundred, right? Hey, so. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started on uh, this week's books. So, uh, this uh, the Oz uh, Reign of the Witch Queen number three was pretty good. It's we're, we, you know we kind of come off of a a real shock ending to number two, where they had captured the terror, this uh, mysterious um, nightmare giver creature, and um, they had captured him with this thing called the Unpassant, and it was a shackle around his neck that had basically blocked his powers. Um, of course, at the end of the book, as you may know, because you've probably read it by now, it's been a month ago, this red rabbit showed up. And the red rabbit had a clock. And instead of saying tick tock like the other rabbit does, he says talk tick. And his with the watch, he's able to stop time, come in, release the terror, and let him escape without anybody knowing it. Mm -hmm. um, so in this issue, we find out a little bit more about the red rabbit and who he serves and that he actually serves the Ace of Spades. So the one big, powerful, um, former Realm Knight, or not Realm Knight, I'm sorry, former Highborn, who was uh, corrupted by uh, the Dark One and uh, the... Um, and then has been given power by the Dark One and the Dark Queen to uh, basically cause trouble for Callie in Wonderland. So right. that's... So that that other little plot out there doing weird stuff and uh and, you know um am I in the wrong book? I did. I started doing Wonderland. Did you? <laughs> I did. Oh. I started talking about Wonderland. You guys are all going, that's not Oz. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'll review Wonderland and then uh Justin, you can talk about Oz. How about that? Um so <laughs> Wonderland number 37 comes off of the uh the terror escaping. Um so now mm -hmm. you got Callie trying to be uh, to be real, uh, have a real life, you know, dating this guy who's uh, in the middle of a divorce, and you know, trying to be halfway normal. Um, but we'll we'll just see how out because that is uh, pretty important actually to this issue. Um, as we go through, uh, you know, we see the terror escape with the red rabbit. Uh, the red rabbit and him both go to see the uh, Ace of Spades. And we know the ace has some some uh, evil machinations going on, um, and then really all the rest of the episode or the issue uh, revolves around the squire, uh, the former the realm knight or realm knight mysterious. We don't really know her origins necessarily, uh, other than she's been hunting the terror for a while. Uh, she seems to be in the same place as Callie at certain points, and uh, really no explanation for what her motivation is at this point. So. Um, still a lot of mystery. Nobody trusts her. Uh, Callie tries to get her to talk by giving her some, you know, ink and a quill. And she just basically dumps that and then, uh, turns up the bird. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, Go not, yourself. Yeah, pretty much. So it's, it's interesting. You know, there's a lot of things going on here. We don't know how this is all going to turn out or what's going to happen. Um, there's some allusions to what the unpassant may be used for since it is a, a way to lock down a person's powers and not allow them to access the, the uh, powers of Wonderland. Right. Um, but we don't know, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. So it's, a, it's a interesting. What did you think about Wonderland? No, I enjoyed it. Um, like you said, I thought it built well. Like we still got a ways to go, I think, in this book. Um, but yeah. then again, this was, this was a launch title. This, you know, starts off the retribution so, um, I don't know. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a good jumping on point for new readers. You don't really have to know a whole lot about what's happened in Wonderland. Um, you know, it does kind of reintroduce you to several characters. You have a showdown between Cheshire and uh, and um, Squire, which we, we don't know her real name. Um, so there's just some, you know, back and forth there. It, it's interesting, um, but yeah, it definitely sets us up for something more. Yeah, it seems like in this book you get three, you know, separate stories. And I don't know if this was intentional or not, but the red rabbit, like the hoodie that he's wearing, has a pill mm. on the back. And then I just saw something about Akira earlier. So it made me think of Akira. <laughs> Interesting. Canadas pill jacket. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe but it's I, an homage. It re, yeah, I really like the uh, the art in this issue. The the uh, Ace of Spades. That is oh, yeah. a creepy character. I really like that. And his like castle, which is like sitting up on like a hand. Or something. I love that the that, big no. hand holding the castle yeah, <laughs> the that, inside. That. It's I mean, it's basically the embodiment of the madness of Wonderland. Whereas Callie's trying to instill you know order in the chaos again. The, mm-hmm. the the ace is on the opposite side of that so his you know his hand castle up there and then as they go in they have to like crawl along the wall to get into the door and they come up through and they stand on the ceiling and his his yep. uh, throne is there it's pretty cool the artwork was great in this one yeah i really like this one so yep all right so now how about we actually talk about oz reign of the witch queen number three which i mistakenly started talking about when i started talking about wonderland instead <laughs> and i'll let you go uh uh-huh. So good. This one, um, if you haven't been reading this one, just to catch you up, the king of Oz is dead, and now it's more or less uh, been, you know, it's fallen on Dorothy. She's going to become the ruler. She's, you know, the rightful successor. Of course, uh, was it Zamora's challenging that with her power, of course, also. Um, but this book, initially, we, we kind of jump into a bar, and we're actually being told the story of what's going on here. And, and I can't remember the character's name. Rocat. 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 Rocat is our, uh, I guess, our narrator throughout this issue. It seems. But yeah. uh, a, a lot of this issue is planning, um, you know, about how they're going to go and defeat um, the warlord. And you know, it's kind of a two-part plan. We gotta, we gotta take out the warlord. We also need to distract. Uh, Zamora, so she doesn't come and aid this or you know do anything while while we're trying to take him down. Plus the actual planning of okay, well once we have this done, how do we actually take the warlord down? You know, right. um, we also get you know the backstory on the warlord, where he came from, how he was raised, things like that. Um, really great art. Again, Zenoscope is doing great with their artists. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about them, but this book, especially when they're talking about like the influence of the green and versus the black and things like that, uh, is really, really great looking. Yeah. That one, just that one scene with the, the infinity symbol. Yes. Uh, that yes. was really cool. I, I really like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. This is a great book. You know, for those of you who don't know, um, Zamora was just, was, uh, revealed to be, um, Dorothy's mom. So yep. that was kind of a big shocker last in the last volume, uh, in warlord of Oz. So that's, you know, there's been a lot of stuff that happened. Thora, uh, and Nicholas, Nicholas is the tin man, uh, Nicholas chopper. Uh, he helped her, he helped Thora, uh, find Zamora's body and then revive her. Of course, reviving her meant that Thora gave up her life for it, uh, which was kind of a, a big, uh, turnabout. Um, and and really what nicholas feels is that he was betrayed and he and he was i mean it was yeah. you know they were led to believe that zamora was going to give them power and bring them together and allow them to be happy and um mm-hmm. she killed her instead so that's definitely wants some revenge so that's a good thing um hopefully it'll keep him from turning on the rest of the folks of oz um you know you've got the two really two battlefields in this one you got a braxis which is the uh, like the the school witches and wizards, um, mm-hmm. where at this point that's where Zamora's hold up, hold up. So um, the Felgrau, who are you know kind of good, kind of bad, but they're a balance of the black and the green. They're both, or um, they're all going to kind of cause a distraction at Abraxas to keep her busy, while Adraste and the other folks all head towards. Uh, uh, central power point in Oz um, so that they can draw in the warlord. And the big key is separating him from his sword. And so they go after Rokat, who is this uh, gnome thief extraordinaire, or so mm-hmm. he says, um, to be the one to, to steal the sword from him. And so, you know, we kind of have to see if that all works out or not. Um, you know, the uh, 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 Smith tells Dorothy that she really is going to have to kind of balance her abilities against the warlord because with the warlord having a sword, there's just no defeating him with magic. Those magic just bounces off that sword. Right. So once they separate him, she's going to have to pour on the power. Um, so we don't know if that's going to happen, you know, exactly how that's all going to turn out or not. Um, hopefully it turns out well, but we'll see. So um, that's, that's all I had to say on this one. 
So yeah, that's pretty much where we need to kind of leave off so we don't spoil everything. But yeah, definitely a good it. book. Then, oh yeah, there's yeah, only both, a couple more issues, three more issues in this series. Two yeah. more. Yep. Yep. So these are great. Uh, definitely worth picking up. You know, if you're a fan of Wonderland, if you're a fan of the Oz series, uh, good books all the way around. So. We look forward to uh, some more stuff next week. I don't know. We've never looked far enough ahead to see what's coming up, but I think we've got um, Aliens versus Zombies coming up. It's going to be Maybe. coming soon. It's either next week or week after, so that's a new number one, um, something something different. Um, we've got uh, another one-shot, I think. Is the Alice in Wonderland one-shot coming up? Uh, okay. I believe so. Um I think we've got that. We've got, um, yeah, those two things. Aliens versus Zombies, number one, and Alice in Wonderland, 10-year uh, one-shot. So that one, those, both of those to look forward to next week. Awesome. All okay. right. Glad you found them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't read them yet, but I do have them ready to read. So we'll get those read this week and get another uh, video up for you guys next week. So be sure to share, like, comment, do all that good stuff. Um, definitely tell your friends if they're Xenoscope fans. Tell your friends if they're not. I mean, Xenoscope is a great company. They've been around for 10 years and counting now. Um, very strong universe, strong female characters, uh, you know, great storylines. And, and it's not just about taking old um, fairy tales and corrupting them and making them all sexualized. That's not what this is about. This is taking and, and putting a different twist on some old stories. And, and they really are great. Um, mm -hmm. I have yet to read a book that I haven't liked. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way. I've really enjoyed everything that I've read of there so far. And an, another thing I'd say is don't be afraid of jumping in on one of these books, even if it doesn't say launch, because at the beginning of every issue, they give you a recap on what's been going on and where you're at now. So you'll be able to catch up and enjoy the issue without wondering too much of what's going on. And if you like it, yep. you can always pick up back issues. So That's right. Yeah, a lot. Of, uh, I know my shop definitely has a lot of back issues, and that was one of the nice things when uh, they had like 16 boxes out they did for this sale, and one box was almost all Xenoscope. And I'm just going through like, oh, I need that one, I need that one, you know. Nice. So just picking up everything I could. It's pretty cool. So Awesome. All right. Well, that's it for us for this week, um, or for this this episode this week. Look <laughs> for uh, you know other reviews later on. We may actually do a show where we really just talk about comics in general. Um, and all the weird stuff going on in the comic book world. So until then, 